Well, we're going to go ahead and jump back on our steady rest project here. <clears throat> That's our plate that we did in part one. Now what we've got to do is come back in here and we've got to put a hole and we've also got to mill another V-notch on the top side of this so that this will register <clears throat> onto the bottom of the steady rest right here. It shouldn't be too difficult. I've been sitting here getting my measurements and writing stuff down. So um, let me go ahead and pull the camera in, give you a little closer shot of what we're going to do, okay? So you probably see this piece of shafting standing up right here. So that without trying to spoil anything too bad, this is the piece of material that I want to hold in the steady rest. So um, this piece right here is what's prompting to get the steady rest in working condition. That's going to be our future project and we'll get to that later. Alright, so what I want to do, here's how our plate will sit, just like so. Okay, and I want to register this V notch here onto the plate. Okay, so I'll take a piece of key stock, I'll probably use this as a piece of half inch here. All right, and it's going to sit in there like that. I'm going to have to uh, mill a little bit off the top of one corner so that it will clear the radius in here and just register on the, uh, the sides. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that and we'll mill a notch wherever this is supposed to be in here for this to sit in there also okay and then we're going to hand fit it so that I can set the key in there and set the steady rest on it so that it's all sitting flat and then the uh, steady rest will be nice and square in there all right and while we, while we got in the mill we're going to go ahead and uh, put our hole in there I decided to go ahead and use 5 8 and main reason, you know, I've got these really nice 5 8 flange nuts that are hardened. These are really good quality nuts here. And when I use the 5 8 when I use the 5 8 flange nuts, it actually will sit nice and flat on there and pull up pull up nice and flat. The uh, the 3 quarter like this is a 3 quarter bolt and a 3 quarter flange nut, you know, it fits the hole fine, but once it's centered up and you put the nut on, it's going to be hitting the casting back there, not sitting flat, all right? So you could come in here and do some milling and stuff. I don't feel like doing that. We're just going to use a 5 8 and, and that's going to work out good because our key is what's going to register this and keep it square. The nut, once it's pulled down, it'll be there. I think that's everything. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, I need to get this thing cut, cut to the right length, mill a little bit off the top, and then after that we're going to uh, start working on the plate again. Just getting ready to cut that key to the, to the right length of three and a half. We're going to make first use of our anchor lube donated by Stan. We're going to see how it works on this little power hacksaw, all right? I got me a little acid brush and I guess we'll just uh, coat it down a little bit. Put some on this side here. I guess we can apply some more as we need. See how it does. Still got a little warmth to it, but I'm sure it did its job and it lubricated that piece. So anyway, first use of the uh, of the anchor lube in the shop. This is actually our key here. Thing does a nice little cut, nice and square. Check out the cut on that thing. That was from that hacksaw. It is like super smooth, almost like it's been milled. I just thought that was cool, man. Thought I'd show you that. All right, instead of milling it, I just went over there to the belt sander and just belt sanded one corner off. That took like 
you know, a minute to do versus setting that up in the mill and milling the top off there. So, and I just dressed all the sides there. So hopefully you can see this is kind of like a little radius down there. So now the key will sit in there nice and square, no rocking. And I can see a little bit of gap there. So it's clearing. So we'll have a little V that we're going to machine into our plate. And I've got this nice carbide angle mill here, and I'm hoping that that's going to be enough to uh, mill the mill the slot needed in the plate there. I may have to end up um, working it back and forth to each side just a little bit to open it up to the right depth. All right, so there's our key. So let's go ahead and get onto the plate. All right, guys, we're getting ready to do some machine work finally. I've already found the center of the block just using my half inch edge finder. So what we're going to do now is find the center point of where I want the drilled hole and then that will be our center, our zero spot to offset this way for the uh, V-notch that's going to be grooved. So I'm going to have a quarter inch offset to this side right here. I've been doing all of my measurements, uh, double checking and I need a quarter inch offset this way. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to use my I'm just going to use my hook scale here another reason why I love using my hook scale so the blocks 10 inches so center line would be uh, 5 inches right there so we're just going to take it to um, 4 and 3 quarter 1, 2, 3, 4 and 3 quarters and I believe I've got her pretty well lined up right there you can see the point I'm just eyeballing it looks like maybe 2 or 3 thou Okay, and that looks good. So I'm going to lock my table there. Go ahead and lock it. I'm going to go ahead and set this on zero. And I've already got my um, backlash eliminated now so that when I pull the table towards me to come back here to do my B notch. And we'll get to that uh, once we get our hole drilled, okay? All right, we're going to go ahead and drill our hole, and we're going to use our Stan Z approved anchor lube for a lubricant and I've got a dab down here you might be able to see I didn't do that on purpose <laughs> I didn't put the lid on when I set it down it fell over and so I'm gonna use up this little bit here I'm gonna drill a little pilot hole with a 5 16 and then uh, we're gonna drill a 41 64 hole for clearance for a 5 8 bolt I just put a brand new grind on that using the Lyle Let's try our anchor lube, see how it works. Seems to be working fine. running that's uh, 660 on the RPM we'll just try that well damn I'm just kind of putting this up here maybe I don't know if it's melting and running down the drill or what chamfering tool and just uh, hit a little chamfer there real quick like all right 
So apparently it seems to be working fine. Uh, nothing wrong there. It does make kind of a little bit of a mess. That's, that's the only thing I've noticed. But I mean, you, you make a mess with cutting oil too, but I'm not used to seeing this green paste everywhere. So just something different is all. All right, so let me clean up and we'll uh, come over here and start doing our notch. Our V-groove, I mean. Well, check out who stopped by. Wonder if you guys picked up on what I did there. Yeah, Mr. Bozo, he's not very cool. So, I was trying to rush through and get my measurements and one thing that I failed to remember was that the hole was actually offset to one side a little bit uh, approximately five sixteenths so i'm going to go ahead and just mill a little slot here that's the um, that's the same 11 sixteenths in mill roughing and mill that i used for this over here so we're going to go ahead and open up that hole to 11 sixteenths and i'm going to mill it that direction five sixteenths and we're just going to let it fly All right, we're going to try about half of it and uh, see how we do. Let me go ahead and get this set. I'm going to set that here half inch, bring it on up. I'm just eyeballing it. So we'll take about five eighths right there and we'll see how it does, if it'll handle it. <clears throat> Just fine taking approximately a, a 5 8 depth of cut there okay all right we've got our carbide angle mill in there <clears throat> and I'm gonna go ahead and offset it and it is three and a quarter inches center to center from the uh, you know, the hole to the, the the groove there I'm going to be doing the depth on this by uh, kind of trial and error and hand fitting it 
it looks by uh, doing some measurements that it's approximately 3 16 deep that this is going to need to go in. So uh, let's just go ahead and start making some cuts. All right, touching off. I'm just going to start with a 16. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lower the table just a little bit just so it's not rubbing on that groove. We're going to come back down. I'm going to take another 16th. It's going to bring us to 125 there. Alright, that was our 1 8 depth to cut there. And I know we still got to go more. We're going to go ahead and do a fit. Alright, we'll see where we're at. Grab the steady rest here. Alright, that's sitting on there nice and square. And, uh, my slot's lining up good now. And you can see, we still got a little ways to go, but not a whole lot. So we're going to be close to my guesstimate of 3 16 Holding the scale there, it's going to put us really close. So, I'm going to take another 50 thousandths and then recheck it again. And then from there, we're probably, I'm going to have to make a few... Um, really fine cuts across there to where I can get it. I'm trying, I want to try to get it as flat as I can. Okay. If we can, if we have just a little bit right here, if I can stick a little piece of shim stock or, you know, a feeler gauge right here on this end, I think we'll be okay. So, take one more heavy cut and see if we can fine tune it from there. All right, let's do another test fit. Just uh, running this little square stone through here just to make sure there ain't any high spots rubbing. There a key there, let me get the steady rest. The casting is actually about a sixteenth thicker than three and a half right there. Alright, we're very close. Getting real close here, so I don't know if I can get you in line with it. Let me see a gap there. I'm just going to guess somewhere around twenty-five thousandths. Let me see if I can find a uh, feeler gauge that'll get us close 
Uh, here's 24. I think that's the biggest one. All right, 24 ain't wanting, ain't wanting to go. Let's see what else we got on here. Let's see, here's a, here's a 22. It's trying to. It's real close right there. There's a 21. Okay. But, you know, calculating what the exact depth that I need is, that's a little tricky there. So we're just going to trial and error. So I'm going to say somewhere around in that range, you know, about 20 thousandths or so. So you see what I'm doing. I'm just going to fine tune it. I want to make a couple more light passes through here and check it again and see how close I can get it. And then once I do that, I'll bring it back because, you know, I'm doing the same thing that I just showed you, just making really light cuts. So we'll, uh, we'll bring it back when I get it real close. All right, guys, I think I finally nailed it where I, where I want it to sit. I took another 10 thousandths and then made it a little, um, like a 1 thousandths cleanup cut down it. And this is a two and a half thousand piece of, uh, you know, a feeler gauge. And that just does fit in there. So there it starts getting tight right about there. So that's, uh, that's where I want it to be because I want it to register on that key good whenever I set it down and keep it nice and square. So we're going to leave it just like that. So the next step, what I want to do, I'm going to go ahead and tack weld this key in there. So I'm going to take all this to the welding table and we're going to clamp it down with a bolt, get it nice and uh, drawn up nice and tight. And I'll just put a tack weld on each side and then that key will be there forever. So I decided to come over here and just mock it up and, and see how it's lining it up. And you come to find out that I was off on my measurement. The way that I was calculating it was that I needed to offset it to mount on this plate a quarter inch. But in reality, it needed to be centered on there because I'm a quarter inch off this way. I'm just eyeballing with the scale here. That's three and a half. And on that side, that's about three inch. So I need to shift it that way another quarter inch. So, what I've decided to do, what I've decided to do, because this plate should have been, you know, a good eighth inch thicker. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and modify this one to make this work. I'm going to go ahead and move this over and recut that groove there to see if that key will sit in there. And I'll, I'll open this slot up again, move it that way a quarter inch. And and see if I can get it to work. But what I want to do is make me another plate now. I'm not happy the way this is turning out. So I'm going to start over after I get this where it'll sit on here and work. Uh, I know what I got to do now. And I've got some more of this material. So I can cut me another plate and, and redo this. And I know what I know the measurements need to be there now. So that's uh that's where we're at so i'm going to go ahead and uh, i'm going to put this back in the mill and cut another notch there and see if i can get that key to seat open the hole and see if it'll work so we'll um we'll bring it back and uh see how we did okay all right here's just a quick update on it i told you i want to try to salvage it so what I've done is I lined the groove back up and moved it over a quarter inch and recut it. And I've got it fit just like it was before. It's, uh, it's nice and tight on the key with just a couple thousand gap right here. So that's going to sho shove us over a quarter inch like we need to go. And I've actually just reached in here with my Sharpie and uh, marked a line on the center because i got to move this slot over a little bit also. You know, I'm just... I'm really disappointed in myself that that I've made these really simple, stupid mistakes on this. But it just goes to show that we we do all make mistakes every once in a while. None of us are 
are ever perfect at anything that we do. We try to be, but it's a learning thing, you know. You learn what not to do now. So I want to get try to get this working to where I can use it on the lathe. And I'm going to make another plate. And the next plate, all of these positions where this hole, this, and everything is going to be right where it needs to be. The thickness too, you know, we need to make it a little bit thicker. But I tell you what, you know, adapting one of these steady rests to a, a different lathe is a is is kind of tricky. You don't have a lot of good areas to work off of. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this. Uh, I'm going to mill the slot, and then we're going to tack that, and then we'll fit it on the lathe again. All right, I think I got it that time. You can see it sitting there on the other the other slot, and doing just a check with a scale that's three and a quarter and that's three and a quarter to there you know and I'm looking down it it looks like it's right over the center of the quill here so now the only measurement where I'm really off is uh, is this way here okay that's uh, that says three and a quarter there also but when you're measuring from here to this that's saying uh, three and a half But I think we're close enough to make it work. And I do have it kind of just snugged up with the uh, with a bolt. You see there. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and, and uh, go to the welding machine. I want to put a tack weld on each side of the key. And then from there, we can make our bottom clamp. That'll be our last step to get this thing working. All right, I got it bolted together, nice and tight on the key. I'm just gonna go in with my TIG weld and uh, just make a nice little tack weld in there. I need my foot pedal first. Flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Not much needed there, it's just to keep it in place. All right, guys. Last step is to make the uh, the bottom clamp. So I'll dig out a piece of material and see what we got to make that and get it made. It should be pretty simple. Drill a hole in the center. Uh, just got to make sure the length right so it'll swing and clear. And we might have a steady rest available to use here real soon. <laughs> 